Today we're going to look at Bellman's Principle of Optimality, a beautiful name for a wonderful idea that gives rise to quite an extraordinary range of problems really to do with managing business, quite surprisingly useful. Now, Bren, Bre Bellman's Principle of Optimality is a very simple philosophy, piece of philosophy. Bellman is an American who gave rise to this, who is looking at optimal paths in the 1950s and 60s. His principle is simply this, every part of an optimal path is itself optimal. What does that mean? Well, here I am, here's my house, my home, and here's the school. And I have worked out that the, it's not the shortest route necessarily, but the optimal route in time for getting to my school every morning is that route there presumably on a bicycle, not using petrol spewing cars. Now, if that is the optimal route, then tomorrow, if I have agreed to meet somebody at the museum, I can guarantee that to go to my house and do that part is the best way and shortest way of getting to the, or quickest way of getting to the museum. In other words, if, the, uh, if that's a part of an optimal path, well, it is in itself optimal. It's sort of obvious and sort of logical, very logical, but it gives rise to uh, fantastic problems. Now, the first one that we're going to look at is a simple problem, um, and it's not got, it's not very um, complex. But here we have, uh, we're going to use dynamic programming when we solve these. Uh, you, when we use uh, Bellman's principle of optimality to solve problems, uh, w uh, the, the process is called dynamic programming. Um, uh, Bellman invented the phrase dynamic programming. He said it was because if he used the word mathematics in his university, he wouldn't get big funding, whereas they were, uh, it was back in the 1950s, if he used words like programming and business, he got lots of funding. So he called the process dynamic programming simply as a means of getting good funding from his university. So it's a beautiful name, however, and a very these sort of names I find very attractive for students. Anyway, use dynamic programming. That's use Bellman's principle of optimality to find minimum cost route going from S to T in this multi-stage network, whatever that means where the rates, the weights represent the cost over four months in thousands of euro. And what is the minimum cost? Now, this means that uh, these might be four months. Notice we work backwards. Stage one is the last month. Stage two is the sec second last month and so on. In the first month, if we do this action, whatever this action is, it might be employing somebody or said doing something. These are various actions. As we shall see later on, these will have real life meanings when we get down to the brass tacks. But for the time being, this is just a contrived thing. Now, what does multi-stage mean? It means that you can break all the arcs, the directed arcs, into groups. In other words, that all the ones at this stage, for example, are one arc away from the terminus. And all the points at this stage are two arcs away from the terminus or the end point. And all the nodes at this point, at this stage, are three uh, 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 arcs away. So they can be broken into one, two, three, four stages. Now, if that's the case, then we instantly use, we don't use Dijkstra, we use Bellman's principle of optimality, we use dynamic programming. Now, let us proceed to solve this problem. And I am going to move this so that you can still see the diagram above. Just get the focus perfect. And um, this is the di we use this for all dynamic programming. We use these five um, columns. In the first is to to say which stage we're at, and we work backwards. You always work backwards from the, the terminus or the sync node. Um, S is for start and T is for terminus here. 
we worked out, it, we, we, we look at what state we're starting at, we see what action we're going to take, see where that takes us in destination, and the value means, in this case, the value would be, what's that going to cost the company? Okay, and we're looking for minimum cost. So let's go. Stage one. And what does the state, well, we are going to, in stage one, we could go, we could start at F, and the action we could do is we could move from F to T, bringing us to a destination, destination of T, and the value of that would be 10. That would cost, in other words, 10,000 euros to the company. We could start at G during this state, this stage, and we could go from G to T. That would bring us to T, and that would cost us 9,000. We could start at H. We could go from H to T, which would bring us to a destination of T at the cost of 7,000 euros. Now, if you're at F, all of these are optimal because they're the only choice. If you're at F, you've only one choice. You have to go to T. If you're at G, you have to go to T. If you're at H, you have to go straight to T. So in the final stage, those are the only three options, and they're all optimal because they're the only ones. Now let's go back a stage. Things begin to hot up and get more interesting. If we go back a stage to stage two, and we always go backwards using Bellman, always backwards from the terminus. Now, or what's called the sync node. Now let's go. If we're at two, we could start at D. Now, if we're at D, we have various options. We could go from D to F, we could go from D to G, or we could go to from D to H. And we're going to look at which of those three is the optimal, which of those three is optimal. Now, if we go from D to F, that would bring us to F. And how much will that cost us? Well, going from D to F, would cost us 11 or 11,000. Its value is 11. And if we're at F, we've already worked out that the optimal way, in fact, the only way of getting to T costs 10. So the total cost there is 21. But if we go from D to G, that will bring us to G at a cost of 10. But if we look above, when you're at G, it costs you nine to get to the terminus. So that will be a cost of 19. We could also go from D to H, that would bring us to H, at a cost of 9. We can see on the diagram it costs 9. And if we're at H, to get to the terminus costs 7. So that's a cost of 16. Which of those three is optimal? Going from D to H and then finishing the job going from H to T costs the least. So that's 16. So I give that the optimal star. What happens if you're at E? Well, you have three ways. No, you won't. You have, you have only two. You can go from E to G and E to H. There's no E to F. Well, that reduces our work. We can go from E to G or e to, e to H. If we go from E to G, that's a cost of 12. And we'll end up with G at a cost of 12. And then we look up. Going from G to the terminus costs 9. So that's a total cost of 21. But if we go from E to H, that costs that brings us to H, that costs 10. And if we're at H, we, it costs seven. So that's a total of 17. Well, that's optimal because that's cheaper than 21. So we have two optimal paths. Going from D to uh, via H is 16. Going from E, we can cost us 17. That is the end of the second stage. I draw a line, you don't have to, but it just makes it easier to not to look up too far. Back to stage three, things are getting very exciting now. We can start at A or B or, or C. If we start at A, we can go from A to D or from A to E. They are the only choices, bringing us to D and to E respectively. If we go from A to D, that costs us nine. Now we look up. And if we're at D, the optimal path, the one with the star, was 16. So we don't bother looking at the other stars. We just say that would be a total of 25. We could go from A to E at a cost of 7. And then we look up. The starred one from E is to go by a H at a cost of 17. That's 24. 
Which of those two is optimal? The second is slightly cheaper. It costs 24,000, whereas the other costs 25,000. What happens if we're at B? Well, if we're at B, we can go from B to D, bringing us to D, or we can go from B to E, bringing us to E. If we go from B to E, that's a cost of seven. We look up, the optimal path from D is 16. So the total there is 23. And if we go from B to E, that costs 11. And we look up, E to H is the optimal path from there on, 28. Well, 23 is a lot cheaper than 28, so that gets the star. Going from C, we can go from C to D, which brings us to D. We can go from C to E, which brings us to E. If we do the first of those two, uh, C to D costs 10. And I look up and see what's the optimal path. It's 16, that's 26. C to E costs 10 also. And then I look up and see from E, the optimal path is via H. So the total cost there is 27. 26 is cheaper than 27. So I shall star that. Last rung on the ladder. Last stage, literally. Stage four, working backwards. They're very, uh, S stands for the source node. Source node. Uh, so we, go from, we can go from S to A. We can go from S to B, or we can go from S to C. That's all. Going from S to C, A brings you to A at a cost of eight. Then I look up. If I'm at A, the optimal path all the way home is this path, and that costs a total of 24. So that's 32. If I go from S to B, I look above there, that costs, that, uh, that bring me to B, that costs eight. But if I'm at B, the optimal path is uh, 23. So that's only 31. Oh, we've saved a thousand euros there. S to C, S to C costs 10. And from C, the optimal path is via D, it's 26. So that's 36. So that's the most expensive. Which of those three is the cheapest? 31. So that's the end of our, our, our work, really. We just had to answer the questions we were asked. What is the optimal path? Well, we follow the stars. We're like the three wise men. We follow the stars here. What about it? Um, uh, uh, the, the, the best way is to go from S to B, then, right? And how do we know what's best for B? We look up and say the optimal path from B was through D because it costs, yeah. And then we say from D, what was the optimal path? Oh, via H. And from H, obviously, you go to the terminus. And that, that is the optimal path going from S to B to D to H to T. And the total cost is 31 or 31,000 euros to the company. What a what a wonderful process. I, this really does require a, a, a just care and attention to detail. And you can easily go wrong. That's my experience. You can easily go wrong. So uh, if we have different dynamic programming for multi-stage problems, you always draw these stage, state, action, destination, and value. You need most of the work is for the value. You start at the sink vertex, the last vertex, and work backwards in stages. You find the optimal value at each stage. You put a star beside the optimal value. Then you go back another stage and find the optimal path to there. And, you, and then you go back, back, back uh, using pr the principle of optimality. And then you read off the optimal path by following the stars. In the uh, specifications, the new posh name for syllabus, yeah, they say there are going to be four kinds of problem, routing problems, which would be uh, you have a, a rep who wants to go to four different marts around the country, and he's worked out the travel costs and the overnight costs, and he can decide which of the seven marts that are on option will he go to, which three or four will he go to, to make the most money for the company. Stock control which I think is the most complicated, and I'm going to look at one of those. Allocation of resources is where you have, say, a surplus of apples, and you can make them into apple sauce, or you can make them into cider, or you can feed them to your pigs. And it might be best to make some into apple sauce, some into cider, 
and some into um, uh, feeding for the pigs. So uh, it, it's very it's wonderful because if you make more of one, you've less of another, and you can go back in in, in the using the dynamic programming. And then equivalent to replacement and maintenance is your old problem. Is it best to let your car run to the ground, or should you buy a new car every second year? Yeah, you can you can do that mathematically. They're all fantastic, but I'm going to take the most complicated. This is definitely the most complicated on the course, and you really need to keep your wits about you. I'm going to be very careful to keep my wits about me here. And here's the problem. Uh, Alex produces electric scooters. I'm just going to move that in a tiny bit and focus. Lovely. He can produce up to four a month, so we can't make any more than four a month. But if he wishes to produce more than three in any month, he will have to hire an assistant for some of the month, and it's going to cost him 350 to hire that assistant. In any month when scooters are produced, the overheads, he has to, uh, our heating, lighting, electricity, etc., is 200. If he decides not to make any, he closes the, his little factory at the back of his house down, and that will save him 200. The maximum of three scooters can be held in stock. So if he has too many, he can hold them in stock. But that costs 40 euros per scooter per month. Scooters are delivered at the end of the month. At the end of the month. The order book for scooters, all of which must be met on time, is the following. He's got three scooters uh, at the end of August, three at the end of September, five at the end of October, and two at the end of November. Now, here. Here's an example. What would be the cost of storing two scooters and producing four scooters in a given month? Well, let's think. Uh, to store two scooters, there are 40 a month, so it's two 40s. That's 80. Um, he'd have overheads because he's making some, so the overheads, uh, overheads is 200. There's 200 if there's any action at the factory at all. And then because he's making four, he'd have to hire an assistant, and the assistant costs him 350. Now, 500, 630, 630 euros is what it would cost us. Now, we're not regarding Alex's salary or anything. We're just looking because that's that's whatever he gets, he gets. So we're just looking at the other expenses in this question. So here goes. I'm going to go through this nice and slowly. So what are the stages. Again, we start at the end, and the stage is the month. And it's always best to write down uh, the orders. Um, what are your orders? The state is the number that you have in stock, the number in stock at that time. The action is the number you make, or Alex makes. The, 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 the number he makes, I put you and he. The destination is the number left in stock. Uh, and then the value is the cost. And the costs are storage costs, overhead costs, extra labor. If he makes four or more, he has to hire extra labor. And OVD. There's an OVD in every dynamic program. It's the optimal value to the destination. You'll see what that means, but we'll, well, let's, let's wait till we get there. So let's start in the month of November. And in the month of November, we have to meet, we have to, at the end of it, we have to make, um, we have to produce two scooters. Now, let's have a look. I didn't read the rest of the question. If there is no stock at the beginning of August, so he, he starts his, he's opening his factory at the beginning of August. And Alex plans to have no stock in storage at the end of November when he goes on his holiday to Honolulu on his takings, uh, post-COVID, of course. Find the minimum cost for Alex to meet his orders and how he does it. Yeah? Now, let's go. Um, let's go. Now, if we have none in stock at the end of November, the number in stock, supposing there were none in stock at the start of November, then he would have to make two or more. 
And then he would have, if he makes two, he'd have none in stock. Now, how much would that cost? He would have had no storage costs because there were none in stock that month. He would have had to keep the factory open because he's, he's actually making stuff. So that costs 200. His labor costs would be zero. He's just paying for himself. That's, that's just, that's for the same for everywhere. There, there are no extra labor costs. And there, there are no OBDs. There's no extra add-ons here, as we'll see in a second. So that would be 200. So if he has none in stock and he makes two and he clears the decks at the end of November, as he has to, that'll cost 200. If he has one in stock, now he could make two and leave one in stock, but that's not acceptable. We say that it, it says in the question at the end of November, he has to have stock. So if he has one in stock, he just has to make one to meet his orders of two, and he's going to leave nothing in stock at the end of November. How much would that cost? Well, he had one in stock, that was cost 40. He had to keep the factory open, because it was so that's the overheads of lighting and heating. He had to make his one. Um, uh, he has no extra labor costs because he's not making four or more, and the OVD is zero uh, at this stage. I'll explain that later. So that would cost 240. Um, if he had two in stock, well, he wouldn't have to make anything. He could just sit there and smoke his pipe, and he'd have none left at the end. How much would that cost? 80. He wouldn't have to keep the factory open, so that might be an option. It, it would cost no overheads, and he'd have no labor costs. So that would just cost 80. Now, as always in the first one, they're all optimal. That's the, the optimal path if he has none in stock. That's the optimal path if he had one in stock. That's the optimal path if he had two in stock. That is November done. Out comes the ruler. And I have also my props. My other prop is every student's favorite uh, object, a calculator, because I usually do calculations in my head. I get a little bit nervous when uh, when doing it in front of other people. Here we go, back to October, in which the orders at the end of October, we have to have five. Now, if we had none in stock, we would have to make at least five. Well, that's impossible. So that's just uh, as... Um, and um, Golda Meir said, in two words, that's impossible. Um, uh, we cannot, that is impossible because we can't make five. So there's no go along there. We could make, uh, we'd have to have at least one in stock. So that now I'm going to note to self, in the previous month, that September, I have to end up with at least one in stock because to have none in stock is going to mean I have to make five in October to meet my um, requirements, and that's not on. If we have uh, n uh, one in stock, which we must have, and if we decide to make four, uh, that will meet our requirements of five at the end of October, and we leave none in stock. How much is that going to cost us? Well, the one in stock was going to cost us 40. We have, we are making, where our factory is open, so that's 200 in overheads. Because I make four, I need to have hired, Alex will need hired help, that's 350 extra, and the OVD. That means if I have none at the end of October, and then in November, the optimal path for leaving none in stock at the end of no, uh, at the start of November is 200. It's the extra money for the following. It's the optimal path to the destination. The optimal values of the destination from there is 200. So that 200 is added to the cost of this month, and we have a grand total of 790. If I have two in stock, by the way, if I have one in stock, I have to make four, and that's all. But if I have two in stock, I could make three. That would give me my five, and I'd have none for November. But I could make four. That would make, mean I had six at the end of the month. I'd sell my five, and I'd have one in stock for the month of November. How much would the first cost? So I'm going to see which of those two is optimal. Well, I have two in stock for the month. That's two forties is 80. I only need to make three. So Alex will pay for his, his um, overheads, but he won't have to hire anybody else. So there's no zero there. And then he will have none in stock. What's the optimal value for having not to the destination if you've none in stock 200? So that's 200 and 200 and 
AC, that's 480. If we have two in stock and we make four, we'll sell five of them at the end of October and one goes into November. What's the cost? Two in stock is 80. We have to keep the factory open. I'm making four, so I have to hire help. And I'll have one left in stock. What's the best route for getting one in stock? It's going to cost 240 to get to the destination. That's the OVD, the optimal value to the destination. When you add up all of those, they come to 870. Which of those two is optimal? Well, 480 is a lot cheaper than 870. And of course, for one, that's the only option. So it also is optimal. Now let's think if we had three in stock, at the start of October. What could we do? Well, the fewest we could make would, would be two. And then we, because we've got to reach, have, have a sale of five, but we could make three and have one in stock, or we could make four and leave two in stock. So let's see what happens. How much costs are those? If you have three in stock, that's three forties, 120. You'll have to keep the factory open, but you won't have to hire any extra help and you'll have none going into November. What's the optimal value for none? An extra 200. 200 and 200 and 120, I reckon is 520. So if we make three, that will mean we have a total of six, but so one will we'll sell our five and we have one left over for, um, for next month's uh, stock. So that will cost us uh, 120 for the storage, we will need to uh, keep the factory open, but we'll have no extra hired help. And from one, the optimal uh, value is 240. So that's a total of 560. If we have three in stock and we make four, we'll have two left. How much does that cost us? 120 for the stock. Keeping the factory open is 200. Uh, making four means we do need hired help. And for two, uh, the optimal value to the destination is a mere 80. So that's a 200 and 200 and a 750. So the optimal path from with, with stock is this path, which gives us five. That's the month of October. We'll draw a line. It's always worth drawing the line, keep things clear and move back into September in which we have orders for three. Now, if we have none in stock um, and we make three, well, that's no good because remember, we must, we must have at least one in stock for October. So that's no go, no, no good. So we must make at least four if we've none in stock. Um, we'll sell our three and we'll have one uh, in stock for the next month. That's good. How much does that cost us? Well, we'll have none in stocks. So that costs us none. But four, we'll have to keep the factory open and get the hired help. Now, one, what is the optimal path one? The optimal follow the stars is 790 from there all the way to the destination. When you add 790, 350, and 200, you get 1,340. Um, and that's the only option if we've got zero in stock. What happens if we've one in stock? Well, to sell that, we need to have one in stock for next month. So we would have to make a minimum of three. That would, we'd sell those three and we'd still the one in stock for next month. We must have at least one. How much would that cost us? 40 for the one in stock, um, keeping the factory open with no hard help. And from one, we know it's 790. We've done that already. 790 is the best way to the destination. That is 1,030. But we could make four and keep two in stock. That would cost 40 for the stock, keeping the factory open. We would need hired help, and but we would have a two left. And that would give us the optimal path from there is a mere 480. Ah. Well, that might be, be better. Oh, no, it's not. It's 1,070. So the optimal path is 1,030. Now, if I want two in stock at the start of September, that's impossible because I would need to bid five in August, selling my three in August plus two in stock. 
that just not going to be possible. Um, so I am not going to have two in stock because you'd have to make five during the month of August. So let's go into our final month, which is a nice simple month, the month of August, when we have to meet uh, uh, sales of orders of three. If I have none, in, well, I do have none in stock, so that's it. If I made three and left none in stock, how much would that cost? Well, I have no stocks. I have to keep the factory open, but I have no extra costs, and I leave no none in stock for the next month. If I've none in stock, the only path is 1,340 to the destination. That's 1,540 altogether. And the only other option in August is to make four, meeting the sales of three and leaving one in stock for September. That would cost 200. You have to keep the, up, well, zero for the stock, 200 for keeping the factory open, an extra 350 for the hired help. And if we have one in stock, the optimal path to the destination, the OVD, is 1,030. When we add that to 550, we get 1,580. Wonderful. We've solved our problem. The lowest costs are 1,540. Now, let's follow the paths, the stars. Let's follow the stars. In August... We have none in stock. The best optimal path is to make three. In August, you make three and leaving none in stock. Let's go back in, uh, on to September. In September, the optimal path is to make four and leave one in stock. So in September, you should make four and leave one in stock. Let's go on to October. What's the optimal path if you've one? It's to make four and leave none in stock. So in October, you make four and you leave one in stock. What's the best thing in uh, November? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm right. Uh, yeah, sorry, to make four and have none in stock. So we have none in stock, so we make two in November. And that is the optimal path, the, the best Alex can do, and he'll have a mere cost of 1,540 euros. Um, over those four months. Now, as I said, there are four types of these on the course. There's one of each done out in full. These take a lot of pages. It's a long, it looks like a long chapter, but it's, it's not. And there are three of each in an exercise of 12, uh, just to practice all diff the different types. But I'll tell you, I, th I believe the students will like them. The only trouble is it is complex and you need to have your wits about you. I love the principle of optimality, and that's it covered. Thank you.